three. Hello, everybody, and this is Stacey Chalemi, and I'm very excited because today we have one of our special guests. She is a part of our podcast community. It's Whitney Prude. She is a pharmacist, and she's a health coach, and she has her own podcast on our station. So take a look at her podcast. She has some great information on how to lose weight, how to keep yourself healthy, nutrition, exercise, you name it. She talks about it. So if you really want to get your overall health intact, listen to her podcast and she's here with us today and she's going to talk about nutrition so i'm very excited because you know no matter how much you know about nutrition there is you always have to keep your mind open because you always learn from everybody else so tell everybody a little about yourself what you do and some of the important factors about nutrition and about losing weight and staying healthy and so forth yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> like, like you said, Whitney Prude, um, I am a board certified clinical pharmacist. I was working at the Mayo Clinic um, for about eight years before I jumped ship completely and, and dove into my own business. So um, that's pretty, you know, it's been pretty exciting uh, to dive into health coaching. I am a certified health coach. I'm a certified nutrition coach. And really and truly, you know, when I look at when I look at the diet and weight loss industry, it's incredibly frustrating because it's like, I, I, I guess I kind of come from a, a unique perspective where I'm, you know, I'm have been trained in and worked in the medical field. And so I can see a lot of the stuff in the medical field, but I can see a lot of the holes, you know, I can see how, you know, how it functions and there's great things, you know, it's like not downplaying the medical field, but there there's great things there, but there's also a lot of holes in really actually helping people um, with right. nutrition and weight loss. So right. Um, really and truly my goal uh, with, with what I do in nutrition, weight loss, and, and really helping people to get to their health goals is trying to fill in the gaps. And with right. nutrition, a lot of times, I mean, we think about with diet and weight loss, you look at the diet and weight loss industry. We look at ourselves. It's like, okay, I got to get healthy. I got to lose weight. And we go directly to food. We go to food, we go to exercise, right? Or we go to some crazy quick fix diet, you know, that's going to get the, you know, trick your body into losing a bunch of weight. But right. the, the problem is, is that all of these things that we're trying to do, these bandages that we're putting on these quick fixes, um, all of these things actually contradict basically mm -hmm. the psychology of how humans are actually successful and how our bodies from a biological standpoint are actually successful at getting weight off and maintaining it. And so really my goal is to help people not only to understand nutrition and the science behind weight loss, but to make it a long-term thing. Like this isn't, I don't do quick fixes. Like, you know, it's like we, we dive into real solutions. What does it really actually take, even from a scientific level, psychological level? How does the human brain work? How do we actually help you to implement habits, improve your nutrition, change your lifestyle, and be able to maintain it for the rest of your life? Exactly. And how are some of those ways? Because you know what? I, I find I get annoyed sometimes because like I find so many things on the market and they're all, you know, lose 40 pounds, lose 10 pounds, lose 15 pounds. And they make it sound so simple and so easy. And some of them throw in the money back guarantee. And, you know, and then you look up a lot of times I'll be curious and I'll look up the company's name and I'll put reviews on the end. And then all of a sudden you see all these like a lot of negative reviews or you see people like trying to sell these, these products that you know are just, it costs a few dollars to make and they're selling it for $80 a bottle. $80 a bottle. You think about that, like, you know, how much you're spending, you know, in one year, you know, when there's so many healthy ways that you could do it, you know, and then there was people that I knew that went on these type of diets and they actually hurt their digestive system and, you know, from using these products. And then they ended up with more problems because, you know, it was hurting their digestive system, you know, and, you know, it, it, it and then some people, they, they did some of these weight loss diets, you know, cut out all the sugar and, or, you know, do this and do that. And they lost the weight. And then all of a sudden, you know, how long can you eat carrots and celery? How long can you, you know, mm -hmm. cut out every little bit of sugar in your life? And then as soon as they stop that, what they were doing, because it, it's impossible, people are going to be happy. They're going to go back to their old ways and they gain all the weight back. It's like a roller coaster ride. And then they're all upset again, you know? So maybe you can, you know, explain to people 
what are some healthy ways and some changes that they can make in their lifestyle and their daily lifestyle that could have a humongous impact on their health and even help them, you know, because now the summer is coming, you know, nutrition, you need to be healthy and strong. You need good nutrition, but also, you know, what are some ways that people can maybe lose weight for the summer, maybe actually fit into the bikini and look in the mirror and have a smile on their face, you know? So what are some things they could do? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, before, before I dive into some like tips and tricks, um, yeah. you, you first talked about um, this yo-yo this roller coaster yeah. that people get yeah. stuck on. And I think it's important to talk about this because our bodies, our bodies are designed to stay balanced. Yes. They're, they're very smart. Um, yes. and ultimately they function in a way to help us to survive, to stay balanced, to restore energy balance. And a lot of times, so there are processes in our bodies and they have a specific way that they work and that they function. And when we start to try to change those and yeah. kind of trick the body into doing what we want it to do, uh, yeah. even though it's kind of against the grain, right there, there are repercussions. It's yeah. not that you do, you know, that it's like this, you know, you can lose all of this weight and expect your body to just be like, Oh, now this is the new us. Right. Yeah. We're throwing mm -hmm. off our biological function and how our body has been used to functioning. So what actually happens is, so a lot of times, okay, we're dieting. Well, in order to lose weight, right, we're decreasing our calories. We're, you know, doing whatever these things are where we're consuming less food, essentially, right? You consume less food, less yeah. energy, and then you burn. And so essentially you lose weight. Well, what happens is when we start to decrease and if you severely decrease, right, so that you're losing very quickly, your body starts to retaliate. It starts yeah. to say, hold on here. Like what's happening? Like, you know, it's like we're thrown off and we need to get back to being balanced. Right. So we go on this diet and we start losing all of this weight and we're losing it super quick. Well, guess what? It's not just that you don't have enough willpower to do this forever. Your body yeah. is fighting against you and is going to get it self back to where it feels like it's supposed to be. So yes. your appetite actually starts to increase the things that you're restricting, right? Your, yeah. your willpower decreases because if you're completely restricting something, then you want it more. You think about it more as yes. you try to make these changes. If you don't do them in a way that is in line with how our brains function, you're yeah. actually setting yourself up for failure. And that's why, you know, you can find studies where they say, 97%, not 97, sorry, 90% of people will regain the weight back after two years, or within two years, right? Right. So mm -hmm. we, we don't think about, it's like, oh, just give me a quick fix. We don't think about the repercussions. You are mm -hmm. setting yourself up for failure. You're putting all of this hard work in and your body is going to fight against you until it restores its energy balance back to where it was supposed to be. 100%, 100%. And, and, you know, it's funny because my body for the last 10 years, I've been trying to lose 10 pounds and my body has plateaued at one number, you know, and it goes up a couple of pounds, it'll go down a couple of pounds, but I have pretty much stayed within this one frame, you know, and it's like, no matter what I do, my body does not want to lose. I could cut back on food and then I lose, looks like I lost a couple of pounds and then a couple of pounds, a couple of days later, I'm back at the same weight. It's like my body keeps going to this one weight and it does not want to leave. And it's like, you know, we were talking about menopause before and it even gets more struggling when you get menopause because you automatically put on a few extra pounds and then you're trying to lose those few extra pounds and your body chemistry is changing. And I just saw a product, I'm not going to say the name, but I saw a product on the internet about losing weight and about, you know, for women who are going through menopause. And, you know, I looked on the ingredients and it was just, it was simple ingredients that we use really, if you're healthy, you're going to use it on a daily basis. Like you have these things that are already incorporated in your, in your diet. Maybe they have a supplement or two, but they're, they're common supplements that, you know, nothing special, you know. And I was telling you, like when I when I saw the, the the bottle cost like 80 bucks, I was like, oh my God, you know? And it was just, but it was, you know, it's really, you know, 
when it comes to like nutrition, like what do you say for people that are going through menopause and their body's changing and their, their, their metabolism is getting slower and, you know, they notice some different changes, you know, cause that's the first thing people, when you ask women, you know, what's going on and they talk about nutrition, they're like, my weight went up and I can't lose it, you know? And it's yeah. like, do you have any nutrition advice for people who are going through menopause? Like some of the things they could do to maybe help them along? Absolutely. Absolutely. And first of all, to the women that are going through menopause and are having, you know, all sorts of symptoms, like bless you, (laughs) you know, it's like hang in there. Um, It's challenging. It's not that you're crazy. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you go to the doctor and you actually don't get that much help. Um, There's, you know, and the unfortunate thing is that there's not really a cure all, you know, it's like for some people, hormone uh, replacement therapy might make sense. But for a lot of people, it doesn't really. Um, and so it's just, you know, how, how do you get yourself to a point where you can function as best you can, um, through all these symptoms and through all of these changes in life. Right. Um, and then as you said, so with menopause, basically what happens is yes, you know, it's like you have the hormonal changes, your metabolism is changing. So it's, you know, it's slowing, but that's, that's not just menopause. It's also age, right? So we, we change with age. We're not quite as active. We don't keep as much muscle mass. So there's a lot of different factors that as we're aging, right, it's impacting our metabolism. And then we put the hormones on top of it. So when we put the hormones on top of it with menopause, one of the biggest things that women absolutely hate is that when you're, when your estrogen decreases, your fat starts to center in your belly. And that's the yeah. one place that no woman <laughs> wants weight. <laughs> um, so, so it's frustrating, right? So everything, instead of distributing over your body, like it may have 10 years ago, now yeah. everything's going to your belly. And that's where, you know, it's like, you're actually seeing it. It's like, my belly is just growing and it's so frustrating. Um, and then with the, you know, the metabolism aspects, yeah. Um, then you can't lose like you used to be able to. So 10 years ago, you're like, oh, I just, I did this diet, you know, I lost 10, 20 pounds, but now, you know, you do the same things and it doesn't work or you're eating the same and exercising the same as you did before, but now right. you're gaining, right? So your body has changed significantly. And the thing with menopause, so number one, what's really, really important. We kind of talked about this of like, Hey, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes some of your, you know, vitamins, minerals, and and that sort of thing can be off a little bit in your body. Like as you start going through these things for the most part, you can correct this with food, with proper nutrition. The majority of women don't need to actually take supplements. Um, so if you can get, if you can get yourself to a really, really healthy diet, um, with menopause, basically when, when we bring women, um, who are menopausal into our program now, first of all, there's never been a woman that we brought into our program. Who's menopausal that we haven't been able to help them to lose weight. Like it is possible to lose weight while you're going through menopause. Okay. Yeah. But it's significantly more challenging. So we have to be really, really consistent and we have to get all of the right things in place. We've got to get your, we've got to get your nutrition on point. We've got to get your protein high. Um, but we need to get you, you know, we need to get you the nutrients that you need. Okay. Um, and then the other factors. So, um, doing the exercise, but doing, you know, some, some strength training, um, just keeping you moving is really, really important, but surprisingly stress is a huge, huge factor and your sleep. Um, there are even bigger factors. Like I said, 10 years ago, yeah, maybe you could sleep four or five hours a night and be fine. That's not going to work right? We have to get all of these factors in into place. And it's pretty crazy. Like as we, as we really like take women through our program and monitor, you can actually see, um, I had one client in particular, it was like, it was so obvious, like she would be losing weight and then things would get really, really stressful. And even though she was still eating the same, like her weight would increase. And it was just based on stress. Like we could, (laughs) we were basically looking, her weight was like this stress meter. uh, And she was so, so sensitive. So with, with menopause, basically, I mean, we, we have to find a sweet spot. We have to kind of figure out where your metabolism is and customize that to you because you're not cookie cutter anymore, right? Your body is going through weird changes. And so, you know, finding your sweet spot with your body of like, what is that calorie goal that's actually going to get you into a deficit and allow you to lose, but then you have to be super, super consistent. 
and not yes. getting discouraged. Like you are going to bump up, but you've got to keep staying consistent because it will come back down, but it's just, it is a tough process. Um, yeah. but it, it is possible. Just know, <laughs> just know you're not alone. You are not alone in this. Every woman goes through it. Um, but it's not hopeless. It's not like, oh, I'm stuck, throw my hands up in the air. You can still right. get where you want to be. Now, what, what do you think for, for women and even for men, like, like, what do you think a good nutritional, you know, um, lifestyle is like, what would you suggest? Cause some people don't know even where to start, you know, right. like, you know, you know, people, you know, and I even had, you know, friends of mine that have been diagnosed with serious conditions and they just continue their unhealthy diets. Like, you know, maybe you can tell people what a healthy diet is. And, and, and it's not hard to incorporate. You can make changes. Like I've made changes and in the beginning. It was a little hard because you're used to your old habits. But once you get used to like living a certain way and you start getting used to being healthy and eating the right foods, your body actually, like from my own personal point of view, my, my body actually got really used to it. And then if I tried to eat something that was sweet I didn't really like it anymore because I, I I took away all that sugar out of my diet and then you know and then sometimes like if things were like oily or heavy sauce I didn't like it anymore because I was trying to eat so um, you know not not bland but I was using spices and herbs and stuff but I wasn't like you know pouring on sauces and this and that so then when I did my body was having a hard time breaking down the food because it was like used to the, once you go healthy your body it's hard for it seems like it's hard for it to go back to like that hard work again because it's been you know on this nice balanced road you know so to yep. you what do you think, you know, well, what do you think about my comment? And then what do you think a, a healthy diet? Like how do people get started? Well, when 100% our bodies will adjust, right? When we start giving our bodies the nutrients that it actually needs, we're getting, you know, we're getting our sleep, we're getting our, our, the nutrients through our nutrition. Um, and, you know, we're, we get all of these things in place. That's what our body starts to want. And that's what our body starts to crave. So absolutely like it, you know, with, when you get used to cutting out sugar or you're no longer really eating fat or, you know, then you go out and you eat a burger and fries and you're like, holy crap, you know, it's like you, you feel it, you feel it. But what you don't realize is that you used to always feel like that. And now yeah. you just feel so much better that you can feel the stark difference of yeah. you know, how your body feels when it's actually healthy and is getting the energy and nutrients that it needs, as opposed to filling it with crap food, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so 100%, it's, it's so accurate. It, it really is. And, and a lot of times those cravings do start to go away when you really take care of yourself, when you're, when you're getting your sleep, when your stress goes, stress level goes down, all of those things, you, your body just wants, it wants to be healthy when you allow it to be healthy. So, um, so that's just a, you know, comment on, on your, your first comment. And then in terms of eating healthy, so I'm not here to reinvent the wheel. There are decades and decades of nutrition research of what, is a healthy human and how, you know, how do we get the nutrients that we need and how do we survive and how do we stay healthy? So I, I don't reinvent the wheel. And when I bring people into my program, I also don't reinvent the wheel. I, I follow nutrition science that, you know, that we have had for decades and one little study where it's like, oh no, you know, we all freak out. And it's like, it's one little study is not enough to change decades of research. So yeah. what's actually eating healthy? eating healthy is, you know, eating from all of our food groups. So you're getting your protein, you're getting your veggies, you're getting your fruits, right? And you are getting your carbs. I mean, uh, your, your grains. And a lot of people think, oh, I have to cut out carbs. Yeah. So many this people think that. <laughs> it is like carbs are the devil. Now there's a misconception. And the reason is, is because we consume an astronomical amount of carbohydrates in mm -hmm. the U S. Okay. Right. And it's just because we have so much crap food. We have so much processed food and granted some of it tastes amazing. Um, but the reality is, is that we always think, oh, I'm going on a low carb diet. The reality is, is that you're going on a healthy diet because right. when you, when you decrease your carbs to a moderately lower amount, that's actually 
like eating a balanced diet. Whereas usually we're used to consuming, you know, like 80% of our diets in carbohydrates. Yeah. I so know. I, <laughs> there's a there's a misconception right so people are like I'm going on a low carb diet but you're going on a healthy diet <laughs> um because we need carbohydrates that's right. you know that's the number one source of how our bodies get energy yes um, and so we need carbohydrates we just need healthy carbohydrates right so so I like to just think of like, you know, there's, there's different things, you know, it's like, I look at like Harvard's recommendation, they have like a plate model or there's um, yeah. our, you know, our government, like plate, like the, my plate model, Mayo Clinic has a, you know, has a food pyramid. Um, right. And they're all essentially saying the same thing. You know, you, if you look at, you look at one of those plates, you've got your protein, you got your fruits and veggies, you've got your grain very right. small amount of sweets, you know, it's like in moderation. It's not like you have to completely cut it out of your diet for the rest of your life. You're not, right. you're not going to gain weight and be significantly unhealthy. If you have like a small Snickers bar once a day, you know, it's like, yeah. that's not what's going to kill us. <laughs> right. exactly. um, so just, so just keeping like, seriously, the basics, right. Yeah. It's like trying to incorporate the basics into your life, but the problem is, is that we try to incorporate it all, all at once. And this yes. is the downfall because when we think about human psychology and how our brains actually work, yes. when you try to focus on more than like more than one habit at a time. And I was just reading another book about this of just really um, how our brains actually develop habits. Yeah. If you focus on more than one thing at a time, mm -hmm. what happens is you flood. So your prefrontal cortex is really the thing, the, the part of your brain that is able to like pause and think through your actions. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it slows down our limbic system, which is where like our emotions, our triggers, it's yeah. like food, yummy. I like I eat, right. It's just like yeah. super quick. And then our prefrontal cortex steps in and says, wait a second, let's think this through. Like, why are we making this decision? You know, so, so right. basically what happens is when we, when we start to look at how the brain actually functions, if you try to incorporate and say, I'm going to focus on this, 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 and this, what right. happens is it floods our prefrontal cortex so much yeah. that mm -hmm. it's still actually, our prefrontal cortex can't process fast enough because it's yeah. flooded with a lot of different things. And so yeah. the, the reaction still happens before we can pause and think through the decision that we're actually making. And so yeah. when you're trying, when you're trying to incorporate a ton of things at once and you feel like I always fail or I don't have enough willpower, like yeah. people beat themselves up about this. But the reality is, is like their brain's just functioning how it was designed to function. Exactly. Oh, that's so, so true. So what we have to do <laughs> is we have to start thinking about, okay, how do our brains actually work and how do I actually be successful? If you're choosing yes. one thing or two things and you're saying, I'm going to create two new habits, that's yeah. all that you have in your head and your prefrontal right. cortex. When this comes up and when this comes up, I'm pausing, I'm thinking it through, like, you know, we're going to be aware of what we're doing. Right. Then your prefrontal cortex can override your automatic reactions and your previous habits. Right. And that it's the only way, honestly. So you try to jump on board and say, I'm eating healthy. I'm exercising. I'm, you know, I'm doing all of these things tomorrow that I haven't been doing today. Yes. You're setting yourself up for failure. Oh, I a hundred percent agree. You know, I love to like study a lot of times entrepreneurs and like the ones that have become really successful. And I like to learn about how they think and how they, you know, what they went through to get to the point they did. And that was one of the things they said. They said they, every time they try to take more than one goal, more than, and take on more than one thing, that's when failure came in. They said that the biggest way for success is to focus on one thing at a time. Once you get that accomplished, then you can take on something new. So it's basically what you just said. You know, even the, the the richest entrepreneurs in the country have said the same thing. That's how they reached success was through just focusing on one habit, one thing at a time. And they put all their energy into that one thing. And that's how they became successful. Just like you said. Yep. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's how our brains work. Like you can't beat it. You can't say, oh, I'm going to be creative and I'm going to make it work a different way. 
Yeah. You can't. It doesn't, right. it doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. Yeah. As much as you want it to, your brain is going to function how it was designed to function and you can't beat it. So you yeah. got to play the game and you have to do it in a way that human beings can actually be successful. Right. And I've, I've mentioned that to some people when I see them take on too much at a time, they've actually gotten offended. Like, you know, don't put a jinx on me or something like that. I'm like, well, yep. no, you, it's, it's impossible to do all that and think you're going to, you know, do outstanding. Maybe if you did one thing first and then you went to the next thing and the next thing, you know, yep. but, uh, and, and, you know, it's funny when you say carbs too, because like, you know, like I was reading like, you know, I love sweet potatoes and people, and then I would, people that, that were, um, would say, oh, you can't have sweet potatoes. It's carbs. It's too many carbs. You're not going to lose weight. And then I would like, you know, I would say, well, car you know, sweet potatoes are supposed to be healthy for you. Like, you know, and, you know, so you, you are, you know, they tell you, you know, you're supposed to have an adequate amount of carbs in your diet. It's, you know, it's part. And like you said, it will bring on, if you don't, it will bring on fatigue. And I've noticed that if I don't have enough of carbs, too many carbs will make me tired, but too little cars will make me tired also and feel fatigued. Yeah. 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 And it's also, you know, it's also in what chart carbs you're choosing, right? Yeah. A sweet mm -hmm. potato is a complex carb. Even a potato right. is a complex carb. You're not eating a donut. You're not eating a piece of cake with a, you know, a bunch of frosting. Um, you, you want to focus, you know, you're eating a moderate amount of carbohydrates and you're, they're complex carbohydrates. So they're not like coming into your system and just like shooting your blood glucose up. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. so you're, you're eating carbohydrates that have other nutrients that have other, you know, it's like if you're, if you're doing whole grains or whole wheat, you know, that type of, you know, those types of carbohydrates that, yeah. that also has the fiber. Right. And that's very, very beneficial and healthy for your gut. So there's, are, there are so many benefits to having carbs. And the other thing is, is that the only form of energy that your brain can use is glucose. You have to have glucose for, to feed your brain with energy. So right. we, we have to have energy. We have yeah. to have the bottom line, like you've got to have carbohydrates. It's important. And even yes. if you look at, so there's different levels of nutrition, right? There's low, the, they call them like level one through three, level one, two, three, right? Yeah. Level three is like when people are doing like those competitions, right? And they're, okay. they're chiseling and, and that sort of thing. But yeah. the reality is, is when you get, so initially when you're trying to do weight loss, you, you do want your carbs to be a little bit lower, but when you yeah. get to the point where you're actually like, you're, you're working out really hard, you're building muscle, um, and you're requiring a lot of energy, uh, to yeah. be able to perform that you have to have really high carbohydrates. So it, there's just, there's just a lot of misconceptions of what yeah. carbohydrates are and how much, you know, um, you know, if you just cut them out that, that you'll lose weight. And for some people, yeah, if 80% of your diet is unhealthy carbohydrates, then you are going to lose weight. <laughs> you, you know, that is true. That is a fact, but are you going to, are you going on a diet? No, you're really not. You're just eating healthy. You're eating a healthy amount of carbohydrates. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, it, and it's funny. I, I, I have someone, I, I know somebody who goes into competition and they like, they have to like, literally they, they go down to nothing. Like they have to eat really strict, but they get a cheat day. And, and it's funny because when it's her cheat day, she's like all over the board. She's eating everything. Like, <laughs> And then when she finishes her competition, she really, she goes back to her normal weight because it's like, you know, as soon as she starts and, you know, living a normal lifestyle again, all that weight loss that she did, her body just goes, reverts right back to the, her yep. old weight. Yep. 100%. And it's, I mean, it's really not healthy to stay in those extreme, you know, it's, you can do it for a short period of time it is not healthy to do that long-term. Like it's very detrimental to your body. So um, it's just, you know, it's finding, it's finding that healthy balance. We don't want to overdo it, you know, but you, you can look healthy. You can be toned and, and that sort of thing. And, um, and, and you can have carbohydrates is the moral of the story. <laughs> 
Now, what about breakfast? There's like controversy with breakfast. Like some people say you need to have the, your biggest meal should be your breakfast. Some people say, you know, oh, you know, they, they like to have a protein drink during, you know, for breakfast and eat light and stuff like that. You know, what's your intake about having a healthy breakfast? You know, because there's like, you hear so much different things. And that's what I think makes weight loss so hard is because you hear so many, you know, controversy when it comes to, you know, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. But what do you think about breakfast? Yep. Yeah. Really good question. Really good question. And I think uh, a lot of some of the reason why people get really confused is because even even what experts say um, and what guidelines kind of say about breakfast and the research, um, it's it's changed. You know, it changes as as we learn new things. But it used to be, you know, it's like, oh, don't don't eat late at night or don't you know, it's like. Um, but now it's now they kind of take the more the the approach of like a calorie is a calorie um, is a calorie, right? It's like if you're consuming more calories, right, you're going to gain weight. If you're in a deficit, you know, um, ideally you lose, but it's not completely that that perfect. But um, that that's kind of the approach. Um, I like again, I like to take the the approach of going back to the basics. How have human beings functioned? Uh, and survived for for decades you know right um we eat breakfast lunch and dinner like we are our bodies are designed you know we wake up and, and we're hungry in the morning you know and then uh we we get that energy and then it kind of it kind of drops off and our liver tries to kind of step in and get us some glucose right but then you know it's like we need a snack um yeah. and, and it'll get us to lunch you know it's just that's that's the normal function of our bodies and yeah. so what, what I try to do really and truly with my program is I try to just get people eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, the crazy thing is once, once I can get someone eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they mm-hmm. will be hungry in the morning. Once they start eating breakfast, because a lot of people try to like adjust their bodies and they'll be like, oh, now I'm not hungry in the morning because I just haven't eaten it in so long. Um, right. The reality is, is that if you can, if you can jumpstart, you know, your metabolism and get everything moving first thing in the morning, right. Yeah. And then you, you're burning energy from like, right when you wake up in the morning. And then what you're doing is you're building a very consistent schedule for your body to know and trust you and say, I know I'm getting breakfast here. I know when I feel hungry, I'm going to get a snack. Then I'm going to get lunch. And then if I get hungry, I'm going to get a snack and then I'll get dinner. And what this tells our bodies is essentially when I'm hungry and when I need energy, I will get food. So therefore, if I need to burn fat, then I can. And I know that I'm still going to get fed. Right. Because what we don't want is we don't want to go into a starvation or a survival mode where your body starts holding on to stuff and saying, no, 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 no. Like, I don't know when I'm going to get my next meal. I don't know how much I'm going to get. Like your body is not fully functioning how, how it really is designed to function when right. you're taking, when you're taking out meals, if you're not consistent and you're wanting to lose weight, you've got to, you got to show up, <laughs> you got to show up for your body and say, Hey, here's our schedule. You're getting food. This is what we're doing. And right. your metabolism will get moving and, and your body will feel confident that it can actually burn the the energy that it's storing for yeah. you know, the survival days <laughs> exactly you know i i you know i find the hardest thing is like a lot of times um is trying to a lot of times I'll get cravings at night, even when I'm not really that hungry. It's just because I know I'm relaxing. Let's say it's right before bed. I'm relaxing. I'm watching my last couple of shows and just lying there. I just want to eat something and not all the time I'm hungry. It's just, I'm, I'm visualizing like, you know, just like eating something. And it's like, yeah, I want a snack. I want a snack. I want a snack, you know? And then I had a friend of mine say, well, try to imagine yourself of what you really want to look like, you know, on the beach, you know, when the summertime comes, you know, and use that as a, you know, and, uh, you know, and so like a motivator and, and, you know, what's your, your opinion about late night snacking? Like, cause so many people that's, you know, you, you're, you're good all day. And then people screw up at night because they get those, those cravings at night. Yeah. So the, the thing with late night snacking or eating late, a lot of people say, oh, if I eat late at night, like I, you know, I'm going to gain weight. The, the yeah. reality is, is in, in terms of the research and kind of how it's changed, right? Is that you, you can eat later. Technically they're saying a calorie is a calorie. If you're eating more calories, you're going to gain weight, right? 
But what usually happens with people is when you're eating later at night, you know, you're starting to get tired. You're like you said, you're relaxing, you're watching TV. Uh, Eating becomes a, a little bit more emotional. It becomes less about need and it becomes more about emotion. And so Mm -hmm. if you're snacking late at night, you are consuming more calories and you will gain weight. Um, But ultimately, I mean, the ultimate goal in terms of, you know, helping with with late night cravings or um, that, you know, there's there's different strategies that you can use. Sometimes it's a habit. You're like, I sit down with my husband and we watch this, you know, we watch this TV show and we eat a bowl of ice cream. Right. It's like sometimes it's a habit but you're still associating it with a connection. It's still associated with an emotion, right? So ultimately the ultimate goal and and way to overcome that is is really diving into the emotion. And how do we start, you know, how do you start separating the emotion of, okay, the joy can really actually come from me sitting next to my husband and spending time with him and having that connection. We don't actually have to have food to be happy and to feel relaxed, right? And so starting to help yourself kind of work through those emotions and creating this divide of like, I don't have to, you know, it's like my, my food and what I'm putting into my body, my physical health doesn't need to be attached to emotion. It should always be attached to meeting the need that it's meant to meet, which is when you're hungry and your body needs energy, you give it food, but we try to take food out of all of the other emotion and find the emotion in what you should actually be getting the emotion from. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. It does make sense. I think, I think that's a great way to break some of those bad habits It's just, you know, like you said, if you're sitting next to your husband or you're sitting next to your partner, you know, like, don't think about it. You don't, don't get out of that emotional thoughts of, you know, okay, I, I, you know, I really would love a snack and, you know, and then you're thinking about, you know, that this is a, this is a, a bad habit that you consistently, just like, if you want to stop drinking something or, you know, it's like you, you, you created a bad habit that you're so used to, you know, like I, I would get up in the morning, I'd have my coffee and then, you know, and then when I cut down on coffee and I only drink a very little bit now, but it was like, it was hard to break that bad habit of not having that coffee when I first woke up because it was, yep. not that I really needed it. I just needed to wake up, but it, I made it part of my daily lifestyle. And it was like, it was kind of like, yeah, you have to kind of, you know, break it up and I guess, and then just replace it with something, a healthy behavior or, you know, and something else. And they yep. kind of like, reverse your thoughts and reverse your action seems like from what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, there, there are some people where they're like, you know, it's like, I, (laughs) I need a sweet at night. Like I need it, you know, and um, there's, there are ways to address that too. It's like, okay, if we're deciding like you're having a scoop of ice cream every night, you know, and it's like, no way, no how, like this isn't going out of my life. Well, then we need to find a way to fit it in. And if we're finding a way to fit it in, then that ice cream has to fit into your calories, right? This ice cream isn't above and beyond um, if if we're going to fit it in, right? You have to fit it in, which means you have to give up something else. There's no, like, there's no compromise there. It's like, if you're going to eat all of this food and still want your ice cream, you can't have it all and not gain weight. You're consuming too many calories. So, right. so there's, there's different things that you can do, right? There's a lot of different strategies and everyone's different. Everyone's unique. Um, yeah. but, but ultimately, you know, habits can be changed. That's the bottom right. line. We can yes. change habits, but it takes consistency and it takes work. And yeah. one thing, you know, that I've done as well, is like, if I go through a period of time where like, yeah, I am sitting on the couch watching TV and I've got cravings, you know, it's like, gosh, I want ice cream. Um, you know, or I want something in my mouth, you know, I'm, I always have like a little thing of like icebreaker mints. I get like the fruity ones, you know, or the sour ones. And I'll just, you know, I'll get three of them. They're less than five calories a piece. And while we're sitting there, you know, I'll just pop one in and suck on it, you know, and it almost, you know, satisfies that, like, I want something in my mouth right now, you know, but I'm not hungry. I don't need food. Um, (laughs) Go ahead. No, I I actually do the same thing. (laughs) Yeah. And so it is, it's just, you know, it's finding, finding what's going to work for you. There's not one cookie cutter thing. That's like a cure all is going to uh, make this huge dramatic difference for everyone. But there are, I mean, there are processes and we all do function, you know, our brains function in a very similar way. And so 
there are ways to overcome, you know, those habits, those, <laughs> that comfort, that emotional eating, those types yeah. of things. Now, you know, this is, we've talked about nutrition and we talked about losing weight. And I, I think one important topic we maybe want to touch base on it is that so many people ha are, you know, we tripled in, in the nation with diabetes. And so many people are either on the borderline where they're pre-diabetes or they're diabetic and it's, it's, it's diet related, the foods they're putting in their mouth you know, and, and, you know, those, those pasta, those rices and, and, you know, other things that convert to sugar, you know, what are your suggestions to people who are either like pre-diabetic or have, you know, have diabetes because diabetes really goes throughout the whole body and could destroy the whole body. You know, do you have suggestions, any, any types of, of um, nutritional tips that you could tell them to maybe help them on their way to maybe either getting their, their levels back to normal, or maybe, you know, you know, not be being pre-diabetic and making their numbers go down so they can actually not have to worry about diabetes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So with, with diabetes, obviously we're concerned about carbs, right? We're concerned about sugar. We don't want to be spiking our blood glucose. And a lot of times that's what actually leads people to diabetes is that they constantly have these huge spikes in blood glucose. So a, a term that, that I'll introduce is um, that, that foods have a glycemic index. And basically right. what this means is when, when you consume a certain food based on how much, you know, based on essentially how quickly um, yeah. that food is able to spike your blood sugar determines what the glycemic index is, right? Yeah. So if you're eating straight sugar, glycemic yeah. index it is high. It's going to sh like shoot to the roof. Right. And that's essentially what that does is it starts to desensitize our cells. Um, and so, you know, leading, uh, leading essentially to diabetes. Okay. Right. So really and truly with diabetes, like, of course you're, you're decreasing your carbohydrates, but what you want to do again is gravitate towards number one, your complex carbohydrates. If you yeah. eat like a whole wheat piece of bread, as opposed to a piece of cake, right? Your glycemic index and how quickly those things are spiking your blood glucose are very, very different. Okay. Yeah. So if you're eating carbohydrates that are complex. It takes your body a lot longer to digest them, to break them down and to absorb them. Okay. So you're not spiking your blood glucose with those carbohydrates. So you want to focus on very complex carbohydrates. Right. Um, so that's the first thing. Another thing that you can do as well is when you are eating, you know, high fiber foods, when you're eating protein and you eat those with, you know, with your carbohydrates, um, yeah. that also decreases the glycemic index. So all right. of these things, it takes more time for your body to break them down, digest them and absorb them, which keeps that glycemic index low. So that's really, you know, in terms of diabetes, I mean, I always say like, you know, try to keep your carbohydrates below 160 grams a day, right? And that's still a decent amount. You can, you're eating a moderate amount of, of carbohydrates, but just make sure that they're complex carbohydrates and that you're eating them in a way that's not constantly speak, spiking your, your blood yeah. glucose. Right. No, that's great advice. That's great advice. Cause you know, it scares me when I see those, those, you know, statistics, you know, especially, you know, in our, in our food industry, the way, you know, the way we make foods and the, the preservatives we put into foods and the, you know, our, everyone's on a go, go, go rush, rush, rush. And, you know, so many foods are, are processed and, you know, people don't even realize what they're eating and they think it's healthy, you know, and it, cause it might say the word lean on it, or it might say you know, <laughs> healthy on it, you know, and so they, they think they're doing something good for themselves when they're actually not, you know, yeah. and uh, the best way to eat is I think naturally, you know, and, yeah. you know, it's, it's really to take, you know, if you could take at least one day out of the week to prepare things and they can just, you could put them in the freezer, you could take them out, you know, and, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of European, you know, families do that. They'll, they'll, they'll make everything, they'll put it in the freezer, they'll take it out, they'll heat it up and cook it, you know, add some spices to it. And you wouldn't even know that it was in the freezer, you know, and yep. you could have food for the week, you know, and, uh, you know, it doesn't take, it does, you know, if you really want to be healthy, you know, you just have to put a little bit into it and you can just change your whole life, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and kind of along those lines of like, okay, well, how do I prepare food so that I am actually eating healthy? Yeah. One of the things that like, 
So, so yes, you know, you can definitely meal prep and you can, you can prepare a bunch of stuff at the beginning of the week. Sometimes people have a hard time with that because they're like, gosh, well, how do I get like that amount of time where I can actually do that? And so yeah. another option of, of something that you could do, and this is, I mean, this is essentially how I cook. Um, yeah. Basically what I do is number one, I choose my protein. What's, what's my protein going to be for, for this meal, right? And am I going to have, you know, ground beef? Uh, lean ground beef? Am I going to have ground turkey? Am I going to have chicken? Am I going to have fish? Am I going to, you know, it's like, what, it, what is the protein going to be? Um, wow. And then from there, I bulk cook my protein because I'm here cooking, right? I'm taking the time to cook. So why yeah. not cook enough for this meal mm -hmm. and leftovers and also for the next meal and leftovers that I'm going to make? So right. when I cook, I'm cooking, you know, it's like three or four pounds of ground beef. And yeah. then I'm going to season this half as taco meat and we're going to have tacos and we'll have leftovers for a little bit. And then this one, when I'm ready, I'm going to pull it out of the, you know, and I just did this last week, pull it out of the fridge and throw in some beans and tomatoes and onions and make chili. Right. Yeah. So, um, and so then like for me and my husband, like that's all we had to have for the entire week. And I cooked for 30 minutes. So, you know, it was like having, Focus, focus on your protein and bulk yeah. prep your protein. And then it's super, super easy to just throw it into a meal. Right. Um, and you can do that once, you know, two, two times throughout the week. And if you make enough yeah, that time, it's all going to cook the same. It's going to take the yeah. same amount of time, you know? Um, and so, so that's how I do it. And I really, we really don't spend that much time cooking, but we always have healthy meals that are available for us at home. Right. And I think that's a great idea. And I, I know, especially when all my kids lived at home, I used to use the crock pot and the steamer all the time. And I had a cookbook. You could make, I don't think people realize it, but it's not just for soups and, and stews, but you could make anything in a crock pot. Like I had a re recipe book where you could even make a meatloaf in a, in a crock pot. Like you could take turkey, you know, like, you know, so if someone doesn't want to use beef, they could use turkey meat and yep. It actually, you can, it, it shows you, you know, you can, you can, yeah, you make it, you put it on low. So it's cooking very slowly. You put your ingredients and whatever else you put in there and it's soaking in. And, and, and then, and then, you know, the last 15 minutes you put it on high and yeah. by the end, you know, after six hours of, of the, of it in the crock pot, it was like a beautiful meatloaf. You'd never even know that it, it was in a crock pot and you could go to work, you can come home and it's still cooking on low and it has all the ingredients and whatever else you have to put in it. And yep. you could do that. They had like every meal you could think of they had that you could make in a crock pot, you know, and then you, you have like the steamer. Like if you, if you're in a rush and you don't have time, you want to just steam the vegetables and maybe put some nice spices on it or something like that, just to give it some flavor. You could do that too. Like there's lots of easy ways you could eat healthy, you know, just, you know, just figuring it out and, and just being inspired, you know, I think is, is some good ways to do it. Now, if we had to take, you know, like everything we talked about today, what are some things that you really like to emphasize that you think really could help people, the listeners today about nutrition? I would say the most important thing that, that you could do in terms of starting to eat healthier is to follow the psychology of how the human brain works and choose one or two habits that you want to work to develop and don't add anything else on board until those feel natural. Try to master it first. So yeah. if, you know, if, if the first thing is, Hey, like I don't, I'm eating out all the time. So, so let's start with say, let's try cooking one or two meals at home. Let's start with that first so that you can kind of start to, to get in the, in the rhythm of it. Right. Um, so that it f starts to feel a little bit easier, a little bit more comfortable. Once that feels comfortable, Let's try to add something else in. Maybe we're adding in a couple more nights that you're like, hey, like we're going to eat, we're going to eat at home for four nights. Or yeah. maybe it's as simple as, you know what, I'm going to decrease the, my portion of carbohydrates and I'm going to yeah. increase my, I'm going to increase my veggies and my protein um, right. at, at dinner. You know, it's like keeping it small, but focusing on one thing and realizing yeah. that this is the, we're, we're, we're working for the long haul. We're, we're working for sustainable results and the way that your body is going to stick with you instead of trying to fight against you is if you make it a process, if you allow your body to actually adjust as you're making changes, it's not yeah. going to retaliate against you while you're trying to reach your goals. 
Oh, a hundred percent. I think that's great advice. Now, can you tell everybody about the services that you you offer? Yeah, absolutely. So we have we have a sixteen week program. I call it a whole health transformation program. Um, we do help people with weight loss, and that's usually why you know individuals come into our program. Um, but there's so much more to the weight loss process than just changing the food that goes into your mouth and, and doing exercise. So we really help people to dive into the really important aspects of what's going to help you to be successful long term. Because if you don't do those things, you're just going to get stuck in this cycle and in this yo-yo. So we have to look at behaviors. We have to look at the emotions and why we're doing the things that we're doing. Um, as well as having the education. You've got to know how to do it yourself if you're going to do it for the rest of your life. So right. everything that we do, it, it's all put together to, to give you the support and the accountability that you need to follow through, but also equip you with all of the tools, skills, and resources that you actually need to be able to get the weight off and maintain it for the rest of your life. Right, exactly. Now, where can people find you? Yeah, the best place to find me is on Instagram. Um, my Instagram handle is at my whole and happy life. And then you can also go to my website, which is the same. It's my whole and happy life.com. So you can always reach out to me on Instagram. We set up a free, you know, a free initial call with anyone um, that, that wants to talk with our team and see kind of where they're at and learn more about our program and see if we would be a good fit for them. So yeah, check out my Instagram. You can also, you know, send a send a message um, through a contact form on our website or or book a call. You're welcome. Always welcome to book a call. That's awesome. Oh my God, this has been amazing. You have provided us today with such great advice. I'm so glad you came on the show today and talked about nutrition because it is so important because I think, you know, people, you know, forget, you know, how, to, what nut real nutrition really is. Cause, you know, between the, the fake news, the conflicting information, um, you know, the fast food and all the other, you know, market employees that they put on the food, it's really hard to, you know, know what, what is good and what is not. And I think you've made it very clear today. So thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing your knowledge. And everyone remember, she has her own podcast. Whitney's ha Whitney Prude has her own podcast. You'll see her on the advisor and you'll see her podcast. Take a look at it because it's amazing. And thank you so much for coming back on the show and talking about this. It's so important that people understand what nutrition is and, and how to go about it. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too.